Gwen. Hi, good evening. I'm Sophie Kirkham and this is Deborah Jacobs Brynham. Um, Deborah, um, good evening. This Hello. is a good evening. So I'm speaking from London tonight. Whereabouts are you? Um, I'm actually in Israel, so I'm two hours ahead of you lot. Yeah, and we are here tonight um, to discuss your book. Um, and as Facebook does its magic and people join and watch, um, we will be able to see um, your interactions as you're viewing. So please give us some thumbs up, send us some love. Um, and if you want to ask us any questions, questions or make any comments do it in the uh, comments just beneath where you're watching right now okay so um we are in the group um and it's all working really well deborah i'm gonna stop talking for a minute and just ask you to tell us a little bit about your book okay wow well it's First of all, it's such a miracle, really, when I think about it, that this book, that I wrote a book called The Missing Piece in Childbirth, which is all about my absolute passion. Well, it's not about me, but it's just about, you know, the wonder and awe and incredibleness of birth, right? And, and really that we have nothing to fear. And from where I've come from, you know, like 10 years ago, I was writing my psychotherapy thesis on the fear of childbirth, on the pathological fear of childbirth, which is called tocophobia. So that's, yes. it's really just unbelievable, really, when I think about it. I was writing about fear and dread and and 10 years later to, to produce this, is just like seems so crazy. It's so the opposite end of the spectrum. Um, but just to give a bit of background to where um, it all started, I was... Tell us. I was petrified of childbirth, hence why I did a thesis on the fear of childbirth, as is always, you'll go towards what you what your um what you want to deal with yourself. So that that was that was where I was in total fear, really just seeing birth as awful, that that was the reality that I had created. Birth is awful. Now, in the face of that birth is awful, how can I cope with it? And what I did for years was postpone birth postponed for years and years got married didn't get pregnant didn't get pregnant was postponing postponing because I was scared because I was just too scared um so many things fear of losing control fear of the unknown fear of pain it was just like everything and um found myself pregnant and um got onto a hypnobirthing course so I, I can't find my way to hypnobirthing mm, there's so many of literally yes yeah. um it saved me at the time um and now when i look back what hypnobirthing did for me was just open my mind to hold on a minute maybe what you're seeing isn't as true as you think it is you know like just open up my mind a tiny bit of gosh like there's something out there's something else there's there's possibility for that birth could be different to what i think so that is the first thing which is so crucial in this understanding. Not everything you think is true. That's, we don't realize that. <laughs> we think what we think is true. Well, where do you think your fear and dread? So way back, you wrote your thesis yes. on this phobia. Yes. And it is tocophobia, it doesn't sound right. It is, yes. isn't it? Um, yes. Of, and so where, where do you think that stemmed from? Was there an experience or was it just a cultural thing? Was it yeah um, you know familial sort of influence what do you think i just think unfortunately our society everywhere you look it is negativity i mean apart from maybe more so recently there's like you know groups like yours and just the whole kind of positive birth movement but i think most of what most people have heard it is negative. It's like we've been hypnotized to think that it's awful. Um, so if you're told it's awful, it's awful, it's awful, well then, okay, well, then it's awful. It becomes, everyone's like colluding together in the belief it's awful. Um, so I suppose there was that and um, possibly some stuff that I'd heard about my mother. They say a lot of comes come from whatever, but um, all it took I mean, what, what, 
basically just to continue the story i did the hypnobirthing course and then had the most euphoric ecstatic experience of my entire lifetime so it's just like all of that i feared birth for so many years and yet it, it was you know it was just a magical unbelievable experience but i practiced like you know hypnobirthing became my new religion i was like i practiced every night i did everything i was supposed to do so obviously at the end of it to me it was like i did hypnobirthing i was petrified and i had this amazing experience hypnobirthing did that which i now see i wouldn't call it a misunderstanding as such because what this what this understanding has given me, which is that I came across a new understanding of the mind. It's called the three principles of innate health. Um, it's also referred to as the inside out understanding, which is that what the is book is all about. Book. Yes. All and what, book. I'm going to post some links. You carry on talking. Oh, thank you. So I would say like whilst hypnobirthing gave me definitely like a safety net of like, wow, I can just let go. My body will do. My body will give birth. All I have to do is work on the mind stuff. That was very much where I was, where, where hypnobirthing led me to. My body can do it. Just get your mind in line with what your body knows. And that's what all of, you know, the hypnobirthing is, is trying to do with the affirmations and the self-hypnosis. Just like get your mind in line with what your body already knows. Your body will do it. And what this new understanding has given me, it's like almost... It's the principles behind why hypnobirthing works. It's the principles behind what creates our moment to moment experience in our life. What is actually creating our experience? You know, we don't often think about it. What is creating the experience that, that is in front of us? Um, and for me, what that did for me, what I realized is like, I don't even have to worry about the mind part either. That is what is like, that's what it did for me. So it's not only like, fine, the body will do it, but I just have to, in a way, deal with my mind and kind of manage my mind and control my mind and work hard at that. And what this has given me is like, I call it in my book, the ultimate safety net. What this yeah. has given me is like, I don't even have to do that. I don't even have to do that. Because what is what is behind everything, like the, the energy behind life that allows us to give birth, that allows our body to do this incredible, you know, of what it does. Um, it's powering our mind. It's powering our mind as well. And this is what we don't realize. Like we, we can rely, we've got something to rely on. It's not like, it's not like we're just a computer with thought, with just thoughts, but like there's something deeper there's something deeper there. And in fact, quite a lot of people have said to me when reading the book, you know, I just felt so calm reading it. Like I've had so much feedback like that. It was just, I felt so calm reading it. And mm -hmm. to me, that that is exactly what this understanding brings out. It's almost like you just fall into this new space of like calmness and trust and almost like an effortless acceptance of, well, it sounds too good to be true, but like an effortless acceptance of whatever is going to play out. It's almost like it is what it is. Um, we're basically living in a thought created reality. We're living in everything that is happening in our life is coming from our mind. You know, we're just moving from moment to moment to moment, whatever we're thinking, we're feeling. Mm -hmm. And that is what, that is what is happening. And, um, I just think metaphors are so great to explain this because it, it's like it's invisible. So it's hard to really grasp what it is that we're talking about. But such a great metaphor is like the sky, right? The beautiful yeah. blue, expansive sky, right? And that's who we are. We are just peace. We are peace. We are confidence. We are everything that we're seeking. We are everything that we're trying to get to. It's like we don't have to work getting it it's already there right already the there. blue sky that we know this at some level we know this like we can just drop into this when we're not busy in our head we can drop into this space of just like ah, oh, just like this is where we feel at home like this is who we are and then like the weather comes across the sky 
So we get rainstorms, whereas like, oh my gosh, we're so scared of birth. Thunderstorms, oh my gosh, I'm petrified. You know, before birth, during birth, all sorts of weather moves across this sky, right? And this weather is our thinking in the moment. Yes. And it's like, it becomes, it's not a big deal in the end because like the weather can never break the sky. The rain can never break the sky. However bad the storm is, the sky doesn't care. The sky doesn't care what weather is there. It's just, it kind of welcomes it all. Like whatever is here is here and it's going to pass. Like there's nothing to fear. There's nothing to fear. There's nowhere to fall. There's nothing to, it's like, we can get fearful. I think that's the biggest thing that this did for me. We can have all these fears and we don't have to be so afraid of it. So a rainstorm will come, we'll be in fear. It happened to me in my fourth birth, you know, and I've given birth. There was no reason for me to be scared because I've had amazing births, but I was in my fourth birth recently and everything was going absolutely fine. I was handling the, wet, the surges and it was just, everything was going great. And then for no reason, because we don't actually control, like we don't control the weather, we don't control what comes into our mind, my mind started just going ahead, or what will the second stage be like? And will it hurt? That's what was happening for me. Mm. And it was almost like in the past, that would have freaked me out so much. It would have just been like, oh my gosh, I would have been in such panic and fear. And what this understanding has done for me, it's like allowed me to gain so much perspective. It's like I was just able to observe what was going on, not as a technique. It was just, oh, right, I'm scared. How annoying. Like That's actually why I felt like how annoying that I'm scared, how annoying. Everything's absolutely fine. Why am I running ahead? Oh, well, this is what's happening. I'm feeling the effects of it. I'm thinking fear. So I'm feeling fear. I can't get away from it. Let's just like sit in it, okay? Let's just sit in this fear. But that, it, that's so different. It like takes the whole edge off it. It's so different to kind of be in it like that. It's like, okay, the fear's here, it's annoying. Oh well, oh well, <laughs> that's life. And then, you know, when you do have that attitude, and again, it's not a technique, it's just where you end up when you kind of understand how the mind works, it's where you end up. But when you, when you take everything sort of more lightly, it shifts so much faster. It's just the way it works. So yeah. it's almost like a lot of what keeps everything in place is the, oh my gosh, I'm feeling scared now. And oh gosh, now what am I getting? And we get so scared of the fear. We fear the fear. And that's what builds it up into such a storm. Whereas when you're just like, like kids, like kids, mm -hmm. they, move through, so they move through their experience, right? Yeah and they don't judge their experience and they have a tantrum and then they're laughing and then they're crying and it's just there's no judgment of the experience it's just healthy mental functioning like that is the potential that is the potential for us to just with no judgment of our experience we can just move through whatever's going to come our way without fear because it can't harm us anyway we can't be broken like we are peace at our core we are confidence at our core without having to work at it. And it ultimately, we know that we will always come back from it. Like we've got this, like we know for ourselves, like this resilience, like this yeah. resilience really, that if you're, if you're angry, like if you're so angry with your husband or your kids, it's very hard to stay angry. Like I don't know whether for adults, because we, we're quite good at holding on to things, but definitely for children. Like, I, don't remember, I always remember my best friend at school, she always used to run to greet me at the school gates. Like, oh, hi, and run to greet me. And then one, one day we'd had like that biggest argument. We, we were like, on. it was like, we're never gonna be friends again. And the next day, she like ran to the gates to meet me again. And then she remembered, oh, hold on a minute. I meant to be, it's like, we can't children. It's such a great example. We can't help but move on like our mind moves on it doesn't like let us be stuck in depression in anger in it moves like thought so, moves. Fun. Fun. so with what you do what you're working with here is this this 
information, this, these ideas and these concepts, these three principles, so that when someone's done their hypnobirthing course, a full hypnobirthing yes. course, which I'm a huge advocate, um, and I yeah. know that we've got thousands of people in this group, and hopefully some of them are joining in. Please give us some thumbs up and some love. We are working hard to help share really important bits of wisdom so that you can build your resilience and you can trust that innate wisdom, that innate power that's there. Um, and I'm kind of, I wanted to ask you about what I call wobbles, because like you said, with your fourth birth, <laughs> um, that's amazing. Um, embracing you, kind of embracing that human experience and acknowledging, okay, there's fear here that's irritating or annoying, um, and it's here. And then, but knowing that it will go, and understanding that it's gonna, it's there, and then it's gonna go. Mm. Um, yes. And moving on from it, and it's it's very fascinating. The book itself is not a long read. Um, and there's plenty of stuff that we can dip in and out of. I'm kind of up to hopeless and hopeful at the moment. Mm. Um, and uh, um, I think that it's really important as we become mothers. So, you know, you're transitioning. Some people, the first time mom, they're transitioning from that. You know, they're not a mum yet into breaking away from being someone's daughter to being somebody's mother. And all of that transition and that in yeah. intense growth that happens. Um, my point being that there is a lot of change. Our own experience can be drawn upon and yet not so much on a conscious level um, because of the trust that's there to say, well, you know what, actually, I kind of rely upon my experience, my system to just let this happen. We were talking this morning in preparation and readiness for this and you were saying things like you know the body will just do it and that i have a birth instinct <laughs> and that you practiced and practiced and both of us have taught lots of women um hypnobirthing techniques mm. and there does come a time when someone will feed back and they'll say i was diligent i did all my practice and still you know i'm unhappy with my birth experience i didn't mm. like your approach because well, this is feedback I've received. Mm. I didn't like your approach because this is how my birth turned out and this is what I wanted. Now, I never take responsibility for the outcome of someone else's birth. That's mm. their responsibility. I'm really interested about knowing what we both know. Mm. How can this missing piece, um, how can you use this as an add-on to current hypnobirthing yeah. practice? And my next question being, does it make people more able to accept whatever kind of birth they have? Yes. Because you know where hypnobirthing started, and it's in the it's in the original CDs and everything, where it's like being okay with no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. And I feel like maybe we got a little bit lost on the way with all yeah, these I'm videos. Prepared of, I'm prepared to oh golly, I should know this inside out back to front. It's Marie Morgan's affirmation. Yes. Okay, yes, whatever birth my turn takes. Whatever birth my turn takes. We should know. We've listened to it so many times. But I'm, just gonna I'm, I'm happy on. with my, I'm happy with whatever birth my turn takes. Something like I'm I'm happy no matter what. In other words, like that's yeah. that's kind of where the where it started. I feel like with all the videos that have been posted up, with like the reputation that hypnobirthing, because so many women do get this amazing birth experience from tapping into hypnobirthing, I think it tends to, um, innocently, people start building an expectation. If I do hypnobirthing, I will get these idyllic videos that I see of women looking like they're asleep and the baby just popping out and it's as though, you know, it's just all perfect. And so I think innocently that that is kind of, perhaps women come into birth with a lot of expectations. Um, and I suppose that's what's a huge part of um, when I do my I do these webinar series, which, which is based on the book. Um, just looking really at expectations, um, what we think is good, what we think is bad, all these beliefs that are hidden 
that we don't even realize are there that but we're coming to um that we're bringing all these thoughts and beliefs to birth um and actually you know we're, we're we're kind of making the whole thing up you know because what in the end what is it it's what is an expectation it's just like a, a sh this should happen so again it's putting this or this this is how it should be mm -hmm. and it's really i feel like just to open people up to the absolute it is what it is it's going to be what it like what in the absence of any judgment i think it was shakespeare who said there's nothing good or bad but thinking makes it so in other words like what is going to happen is going to happen it's going to play out how it's going to play out and then we put our thinking on top of that it's almost like there's a parallel thing going a parallel life going on here it's like what is happening and then all of our thoughts about it so on paper it could look like the birth was absolutely fine and yet you've got somebody who's like so dissatisfied with their experience it's like yeah. it, this this is really what this understanding adds because you start to see hold on a minute like and this is why it's called the inside out understanding that it's all coming from it's a thought created reality we, we we're putting it onto it's like there's what's happening and then there's our experience of it which can be entirely different and like we know this on some level like you see people who you know who, who they give birth in the car say so objectively, you'd think, gosh, that's so stressful, but yet they were so calm about it. Or the opposite, they've got everything they wanted and needed, this idyllic setting, the right midwife, yeah, and that. Really and they're okay. stressed out and crazy as anything. And in fact, they say about birth trauma that it's your perception of what you feel happened. It's nothing to do with, but on paper, this birth looked fine. It's what you, it's what you're doing in your head. So it's just really pointing to pointing to that really that just just to realize that we're we're living in we're living in a movie of our own making it's so crazy really um but we have no control over it it's not to say or change the movie like we can't change the movie if we're in absolute fear and panic like that's where we are but it's more like it's fine it's fine to be in fear and panic we don't have to meddle with it it's an already perfect system it's like it's self-correcting. The mechanism is self-correcting. If we go through whatever, any of these negative emotions, <clears throat> we will bounce back. It's like a cork. You push it underwater, you push it underwater, it will come back up. Mm -hmm. It's like we're doing that with thought. We're like, you know, all of these things, with our expectations and disappointment. And it's like, in spite of all that, we will come back. That's the, the ultimate resilience. And it's also like the ultimate freedom because it's like there's nowhere to, nothing can break us. There's nowhere to fall to. It's like, I, I don't know whether I'm, it's hard to, to, to get across. It's because obviously you have to really delve into the understanding, but that's what you're left with. It's like, there's nothing to fear, like nothing to fear. Whatever circumstance you're put in, it's just, a, it's all a matter of perception. So, so you know, and you know what, wherever you are, say if you are in a panic, it's gonna pass, it's like, it's yeah. gonna pass. And the wisdom of the system, if you are in fear or panic, it's like a wake up call, it's like, it's like the body saying to you, hey, look, you've gone off track, your thinking's off at the moment. That's all, that's all that you need to know. Mm -hmm. It's like any sort of negative are comfortable or any of these, sort of so-called negative emotions, they, they become our guide. It's kind of like a signal, hold on a minute. It's just telling you, like you've left the present moment right now. You're not seeing reality really as it is. You're not seeing what's really there. Like, yeah. just, like just be aware of that. You've lost perspective. And that's really helpful. That's just really helpful. And knowing that you just, you will regain your bearings. It might not be on your time scale, but you will come back from it. But it's yeah, just like, like that. a little yeah, tapping shoulder. Very impatient at wanting remedy, wanting yes. to balance, to feel in a great place. Um, 
you know, specifically for women in their labors during their surges, as power builds and intensifies. And if they get scared, then yeah, of course, I'm going to say they're going to use their techniques to bring them. Yes, of course. That, that's yes. bigger to say something's got to change. Yes. Got to change. What, what's know, amazing. Right in the space, in their yeah. birthing moment that needs to change um, so that they can um, be at peace and crack on with, you know, being in labor. That's that's what I love. It's being at peace with whatever happens. It's not necessarily having this peaceful, idyllic birth. It's being at peace with whatever happens. I think that is so the key. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, because I think we could all look back at um, our births and say, oh, you know, I would have liked to have done that differently or I wish that hadn't have happened or, you know, I don't believe in the perfect birth. You know, there's obviously the perfect baby that comes out at the end who you bond with in your own time, not necessarily instantaneously, but over mm. time. And knowing that it isn't going to be perfect, and yet a positive experience is achievable, is huge. And um, I've worked with lots of different women, um, and I've worked, I mean, I have to say, you know, my favourite work is with women who want to birth differently than they've birthed before. Mm. Some women who come from a, an experience where they didn't know they had a choice or they'd been messed about with, or, oh, goodness me, a huge long list of special circumstances. I yeah. love working with those women because I want to um, support them in having a better yes. experience. And um, I think your book is a great adjunct and I think that the women should read it along with their partners. Um, I don't think it's just, you know, with all of your literature that you're reading as part of your birth preparation, if your partner is your birth partner and you're going to be parenting your child together, for goodness sake, read the literature, both of you. Don't just highlight passages that you think he will find significantly important. Please do yourselves a favour. Come on, start as you mean to go on. If he's not going to be chipping in and parenting and it's not a 50-50 thing, fine. That's not my bag. You know, I I want to have a partner who's going to get involved. And um, this is a new one for the library. Um, the Missing Piece in Childbirth. Deborah, you've got webinar series coming up. I want to introduce that to people watching. I want them to know that you have um, yes. a webinar choice option. So people can either join yeah. a group webinar or they can work with you one to one. Um, yes. So it. <clears throat> on, explain a little bit and if you're interested all you have to do is type letting go in the comments underneath mm -hmm. so you type letting go and yeah. we'll get back to you with details so i mean why i call it letting go is i mean that is the that is the result of of doing the course it just allows you it's the ultimate the ultimate letting go and, and surrender to allow your body to do what it knows how to do, but allow your mind to know what it knows how to do. Really, it's there for you to rely upon. It will feed you what you need on the day. It's like, you know, it, it's the ultimate, ultimate safety net and the ultimate way to allow you to let go. So it's a four week webinar series and um, really it's based on the book. So each each week we just take a different aspect of it i mean i start with talking about opening your mind to the absolute infinite possibility of what your birth could be because we don't realize really what's how we're limiting how we're limiting things so really like open up to like yeah. what it could be um the second week goes really into the heart of the understanding of the three principles um which really just describes the nature of thought what is thought where does it come from how is it creating our moment to moment experience? So really getting in there. Of, and I mean, this plays out in your whole life. You'll start seeing shifts in your whole life because that's it's just the way it works. So that is really the heart of the understanding. Um, week three moves on to really what we are at our core, which is this inner wisdom that is guiding us throughout, throughout birth and throughout life in every moment once we're aware of it. Um, and that we're, we're pe we are peace, we are confidence, we are resilience at our core. So really like sort of drumming that in really to, um, to see that for yourself.
because it's it's all very well to say and have it as a belief, but it's it's seeing that for yourself and really seeing wow that that's true, um, that's that's what creates the shift. And then uh, week four is really the implications for fear, like how how differently how how to deal with fear, what fear really is, and um, seeing fear for, for the illusion that it is. Um, I talk about physical. Um, we don't use the P word um, in hypnobirthing, but kind of physical sensations and what, yes. what, what role is thought playing in that? Because role is playing a huge, uh, thought is playing a huge role in 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 the pain that, that is experienced. Like it, it's, I mean, there's a whole chapter in my book on pain and pain, the difference between pain and suffering. And it, it's so um, enlightening really when you look at the role of thought that thought has to play in that and placebo effects and all of that that we that we know um and then just talking about you know control and the unknown which is what most people fear is losing control and being in the unknown and and how ultimately this understanding allows you to be okay with that so um it's a four four part webinar series that, that is um done in a group and for for, for today um to, for your group i'm offering it at 60 pounds for that whole um four part series which ah. I think is very cheap. So <laughs> yes. It'd be excellent. And we've got a limited number of places. So mm. I think we have an 11,300 strong um, <laughs> and group. And yes. about 5,500 active users. So yes. 5,500, you can meet the needs of, say, 20. So we're yes. capped at that. And then it's ongoing. To, yes. Is there any specific time in pregnancy that? that women could pick this up you know are you yeah it's it's, it's interesting because it's different it's different with the hypnobirthing tools and techniques that, that require practice and all of that it's a different thing this is like this is a shift in your understanding of life a shift in your mindset that's going to allow you to let go um i'd yeah. say it, it just dig in as soon as you can that's what i would do um okay. but at any any point you know it's um it's something that is, uh, it's not an intellectual learning. It's not like you can just read the books and then understand it. It's more of a learning via insight, via your own insight of what you see. Um, so for some people, they see it like that and they're like, oh my goodness, I see a whole new world. And for some people, it takes a little bit longer, mostly because they're trying to grasp it with their intellect. Oh, okay. I was just thinking from a, in, how we absorb information, how we're processing that information and um, how we then how it then becomes our behavior our belief our value all of that um you know shift or change can happen really quickly yes and yet sometimes it can be very gradual and yes. so if if you do some change work with somebody um then you know i you can notice a shift immediately or maybe it is really gradual and it just depends on the person yes it is, a, I just, it is yeah again it's not in a, within our control that's what i find so fascinating about it it's just like we can just put our hands up and just say what we're, we're going to see what we're going to see just relax into it even the tiniest bit that you see of this understanding will shift things for you so big small you know people benefit whatever they mm -hmm. see so <laughs> so yeah that's yeah. That's, um, that's where we're at with it so um yes i've put links in the comments here to deborah's book um the missing piece in childbirth birth of confidence ease and peace of mind and you've actually got um a couple of people who've read it including and i don't know if i'm going to pronounce this right help me out dr Gori Mota, Motha, 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 yeah. Mota, who's an obstetrician and she's the author of the Gentle Birth Met Method. And she went through a huge transformation, didn't she? Sort of emotionally, mentally, when she had her, her first baby, I think. Um, so I, I was kind of really chuffed that you got her to read it yes. and review it for you. Yeah. Did you manage that? What, what happened? What's the story there? Did you just send it to yes. me? Well, well, because I was so petrified of birth. I like, you know, I went on a mission to just sort of <laughs> overcome it. And I found her, she just, it used to, I don't think it's not there anymore, Vivica. She used to um, r run a, I don't know if it's still there, so, uh, the hospital St. John's and St. Elizabeth. Anyway, I tracked her down 
And um, she just really sort of, I, I had some one-on-one -on -one sessions with her and she, she just, the most lovely, sweet, she really instilled, you know, talk about a shift, you know, you almost get it off someone else, don't you? Like if you feel, if you see that they're so confident and they've got so much trust, it almost like through osmosis gets, gets through to you. And so she really had an impact on me. Um, and so, yeah, so I just asked her to read it. I, I just, I, I thought she wouldn't even remember me. She probably didn't remember me, but she's so sweet that she even, you know, bothered to read it because she's so huge, really, um, and busy. And so, yeah, I was, I was very chuffed with that. Cool. Um, and uh, I think um, we can push this as a book club thing to do here in the group as well, so we can get people to get the book and then we could maybe invite you back in a month or so. Yes. Yeah, that would be great. Attack. Or we can take it kind of into a webinar. It's probably a better idea, actually. <laughs> take it into a webinar setting. Okay. Um, I'm just going to look over my notes because amazingly, yes. my two lovely kids managed to be brilliant <laughs> half an hour. Yes. Full of kind of trepidation, to be honest. I was like, how's this going to pan out? Yes. Okay. I fell asleep at five o'clock. I was like, great. She's going to wake up half an hour before the live. Oh, no. <laughs> Megan is 14 and a half months old. She's a tiddler. And <laughs> Eddie's nine and a half. He's just coming back from a comfort break. Shudder. And he's been a great brother. But you said she's kind of looking after her son, right? Yeah. She's just waiting for me to come back. But it it's so interesting because it's like that's thought for you. All of this, um, all of this worry and oh gosh, it, I've also been through that the whole day. Will the baby stay asleep? I don't have any backup. And look, this is what we do. We like rev it up. What's the birth going to be like? Blah, blah, blah. And it's all just it's so funny what we do. And then like it is what it is. It plays out how it's going to play out, and it's funny. And we can't control it. And yeah, exactly. yeah. And and I think learning about that now in pregnancy rather than later it's okay yeah. we all learn stuff in our own time you know having that insight is very useful because parenting is a huge shift it's a huge change you know, i'm full of ambition for what i want to do with my work i have children <laughs> and i'm not prepared to stick them in full-time childcare i can't do it i can't do it yes i can't do it so it's um it, 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 to compromise and it's a big deal it's uh, and as you say thoughts yeah you have to make time to be still every day but i do think it's amazing to reach women during pregnancy because that that early care of the baby especially when it's your first and like you say the changes and it's literally like all your thoughts have been thrown up in the air you, you no part of your life remains unchanged right and it's 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 like to get to women to get this understanding to women before they go through that what is you know usually a turbulent you're sleep deprived you're going through all sorts of thoughts and feelings and and to to realize your resilience is just so useful postpartum so it's it's, yeah, it, it's I've, I've been spoken to you tonight and this morning it's given me a different view on um when i I share with women like if you knew how strong you were i'd be out of a job you know and yeah. actually i'm normally referring to just emotional physical strength i'm hearing little sounds that tell me yes oh. um, <laughs> that yeah but that strength and that resilience is innate it's there it's always been yeah. there um, yes it's just learning that it's there and trusting that it will be there yes and, yeah. yeah oh thank you deborah Oh, thank, <laughs> thank you thank you for inviting me it's been so nice thank you yeah it's been a pleasure so um tomorrow let's share some stuff in the group about um book club and um please um just share some information in the comments and also um and in the group with the sort of admin permission just explaining what your offering is because i think oh, it's great fabulous. really fabulous oh Marvellous. Okay. Thank okay. you so much for joining us, everybody. And we wish you well. I hope you have a nice, warm, safe evening wherever you are in the world. Look after yourselves. Thank you, Deborah. Um, and thank enjoy you. Warm sunshine tomorrow. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Think of you in the cold. It's only weather. Yeah. It will pass. <laughs> okay. Good. Yeah.
Okay, lots of love. See you. Bye.